welcome to my youtube channel thank you my wonderful lovely subscribers thank you so much for staying tuned for walking the journey with me learning together thank you for the comments thank you for the feedback both on the channel and also on email i do appreciate a lot thank you thank you so much thank you for even those who have been sharing a lot they have been sharing my posts a lot thank you so much i do appreciate and may god richly bless you for the support that you have consistently given me thank you i do appreciate I would also want to welcome the new subscribers thank you for joining this channel thank you so much and thank you even for the obedience of starting from the beginning as i've always been saying when you join in the channel kindly start from the beginning so that you can come up as you learn so that when i speak or when i say something you can clearly understand from where we are coming from thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much even for those who are giving a lot of positive feedback saying how much they have learned they, i have said something that they actually never thought it that were or never they didn't even know so i'm so grateful as i said from the onset of this channel it is for us to learn together, to take this journey together, to understand in depth and widely about marriage, the, the purpose, the reason for marriage, um, um, who is the husband, who is the wife, so that at least even for those who have not decided, made the decision to take, to take up this step, they know they just don't go in blindly not knowing what actually it means and for those who have already made a mistake by choice by not consulting god or they didn't even know what they were getting themselves into there is correction there is room for forgiveness as i said because in the bible it's, as i said earlier it's only one mistake that can be forgiven one sin but any other sin sin of choice you made a wrong choice. You can repent and take a turn and allow now God to be your shepherd to direct you into your place of blessing. Because I normally say there is a place of blessing. And anytime we find ourselves not in our place of blessings, we tend to suffer a lot. We tend to perish. We tend to be destroyed. We tend to be robbed by the devil because that is a devil's playing field. Because that where we are in that place god is not there we are not in the presence of god as genesis calls it eden in in the presence of god so we need to be in the place in our place in our place in our eden god needs to usher us back into our eden so that we can partake in wholesomeness of the goodness of god in this land of the living so welcome welcome to my channel and the topic of today uh, we are going to learn about the two types of seeds. So the title of our topic today is two types of seeds. And there is a great reason why I needed to bring this topic. And as I said that every topic we have in this platform is in relation to the union of marriage. Because for me, my prime focus is the union of marriage. And there are many things I would want us to learn um, widely so that when we find ourselves in the union of marriage we are not caught up by events um, in lack of knowledge or in foolishness because uh, the opposite of knowledge is foolishness and you know the bible clearly says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge so if we are found in foolishness definitely we are going to be destroyed so most of the topics that i bring in this channel are to aid us are to arm us are to make us walk in wisdom Yes, to walk, walk in understanding, walk in revelation, walk in wisdom, walk in knowledge, walk in the fullness of the spirit of the Lord that we cannot be destroyed by anything that comes our way because already we have seen it before even it posts itself or even decided to come our way. So um, um, all the topics that we will be handling here, you will see by the end of the day, are related into the union of marriage. So the title of our topic today is two types of seed. And I will stand, I will start by saying this. There are two types of, uh, there are two, there, in this world, there are two types of children. And um, as we go on, you'll see, I'll back it up with the scriptures. Um, but it is. 
in this earth in this earth that we live in there are two types of children the children of god and the children of the devil the seed of god and the seed of the serpent the devil or the dragon or whichever name we call it so um in a nutshell there are two kingdoms the kingdom of god and the kingdom of the devil and both kingdoms they have children and in this world those children walk they are here in this earth so as we are talking today the children of god can obtain forgiveness and salvation but the children of the devil just as their father is cannot obtain salvation they cannot be saved that seed is for damnation that seed cannot be saved and it is funny because these children as they walk they are this seed of the devil remember physically they are just like you and me physically they are human beings physically they are male and female physically you will say they are people they can be saved if they error and they cause you harm you will forgive them and even intercede for them but what you do not know spiritually this is a seed that cannot be saved this is a seed that was created with a mandate this is a seed that was created with a mission this is a seed that was created with a purpose just as we the children of god we have a mandate we have a purpose we were brought in this earth for a purpose to accomplish a particular thing this seed by the time it comes to the earth it already understands clearly its purpose its mandate they know the reason why they are on earth they know the reason why they have been given particular instruction to be in a particular place and to act the way they are acting so they are not ignorant as to why they walk the earth today they are not ignorant as to why they are in this earth they are not ignorant of the spiritual realm to start with and the physical realm as with the children of god most of us find ourselves walking in this earth physically with a little understanding of the spiritual realm of which we are born from and of which we are spiritual beings this seed of the devil walk fast in the realm of the spirit everything they execute in the physical realm has already been and clearly understood from the realm of the spirit so this is the seed of the devil so this seed clearly knows they know who they are they know what they are they know what they are capable of they know their mandate they know their role they know their purpose and they know their mission two types of seed there's something else i want before we proceed you should also understand that as we are said the, saying the seed of the devil or the seed of the serpent most of us will remember from genesis the devil and so they are already confirming that this seed belongs to the devil but also while we are at that i also want you to take one key note and a very huge note to take you need to understand this they are angels because we also know that um when sap when the devil was thrown was cast down he was cast down by a third of the angels that defied god because you remember lucifer was a cherub and um he wanted to be like god so he brought war in heaven and the archangel michael was used with the angels to fight him and within seconds he was thrown down with a third of the angels he had converted or let me call them with his converts who were other angels and so satan who is also an angel and a third of the angels are he were, were cast down here on earth but i was i also want to bring to your attention that these are not the only fallen angels under the jurisdiction of the devil that are walking the earth today so as we continue you will also understand there are angels that have fallen and not under lucifer's leadership 
You understand? They do, did not come as a result of the fall of Satan and a third of the angels. There are other angels also who are walking in this earth, who have defied the creator, our God, and they are here on earth also with their own mandate, with, or with their own missions as well. Um... And before we continue, um, yes, uh, let me not mention that. Let me co let me mention it as we start off on the scriptures. So um, as we start the scriptures to start proving or um, really keenly studying and identifying the seed of the devil because that is my prime focus. Although in closing, I will close with the seed of God and our mandate by giving two scriptures. Um, let's start with Colossians 1. 16 and i'll read from king james version that is the book of colossians 1 16 for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they are thrones or dominions or principalities or power or powers all things were created by him and for him so in Colossians 1 16 God is telling us or we are made to understand that God created all things everything we knoweth and knoweth not was created by God whether thrones dominion principalities powers all things remember a double L all things were created by him and for him so there is nothing we know there is nothing we have seen there is nothing we have um we we have known or we have discovered whether it was discovered yesterday whether it was discovered today whether we never knew that it existed and now we know it exists all things were created by our creator god all things everything we know with and know with not was created by god nothing exists outside the creation of god so anything we know anything we know was created by our God, our creator, the one we kneel down to, the God we serve. I will take you to Revelation 4.11. Also, I will read from King James. For thou art, for thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created you see it's repeated again god has created all things and now in revelation 4 11 it's saying for thy pleasure were they all created you see god has created all things a double l all things for thy pleasure they are and were created now in in revelation 4 it's bringing to your attention that everything god created he created for himself he created for his own pleasure they were all created all all of them they were created first by god so everything we know and know it not was created by our god it was also created for him in the previous scripture colossians is saying for him they were all created all things God created for himself. In Revelation 4.11 he's saying, for his own pleasure, he created all things. You see, all things were created for him. All things were created for his pleasure. So everything that God has created, everything we know and knoweth not, was created by God. Nothing exists outside God's creation. So everything created was created by God for himself and for his own pleasure. So we have seen those two, Colossians and the book of Revelation. It is confirming that is nothing, nothing has been created, that nothing exists that was not created by our God. So that, where am I going at when I started with these two scriptures? Because I want you not to forget that even Lucifer was created by God. The fallen angels, the third that he fell with, were created by God. Everything you call evil, everything you know, everything you know it not. Lucifer, I normally say so many times that he doesn't have a mind of his own. Everything he tends to do, everything he sets to do, it is what he knows. 
anything he has seen because don't forget our God is a God of love and our God is a God of wrath and remember because we are told all things were created by God even hell was created by God wrath was created by God war was created by God there is nothing Lucifer has no mind of his himself to create anything to say that I am the first inventor I have created this thing everything he knows he knows because he saw it from our kingdom the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from our God the Creator so that's why I needed to bring these two scriptures all things all we were not told some everything was created by God so now I will take you to Genesis 6 2 that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose so um, there's been a lot of debate and a lot of agreement, disagreement. They agree to disagree even in the world of um, theology about these scriptures, about calling them the sons of God. Some are saying, no, it is not the original translation. This is wrong or it's supposed to be right or wrong, the sons of God. But I can clearly understand maybe from my own perspective why they were called the sons of God. These are angels. These angels are, are, are shining. Uh, they do not have our form. They have wings. I mean, they are coming. They are dropping from heaven. So anyone um, uh, watching from that angle, they can say they are the sons of God. But we know they are fallen angels. We know now they have a name, Nephilim, yeah? the fallen ones. Yeah. So... Um, Let's not, uh, I, I don't want to dwell so much on that discussion because I don't even think whether it has been concluded yet. But I will say as, as it is written in the Bible, and in real sense, they were created by God. So they were the sons of God. The same way we call ourselves the children of God. Even when we error, we are still the children of God as human beings. And that's why us, we have a chance to repent and be reconciled back to God because we are born of the seed of God. So these are the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them as wife of all which they chose. So we can see here that there are fallen angels that came as a, not as a result of the devil. Not the one third when they caused war and they were thrown by the archangel um, to the earth. But these particular angels were still in heaven after the fall of Lucifer. And now they saw beautiful daughters of men. And they decided to leave their estate, their position, and to defy the orders and the laws of God. And they decided to come down and be, you know, angels. This is where I normally say angels can take up any form. They actually did not come as angels because I don't think that when these daughters of men, if they could have seen them in their majesty, in their greatness, in their heights, with their wings, with all their glory descending and wanting to take them as wives, I don't think they would have agreed. I think they would have actually ran away or even bowed to serve them, not... And they would not even have even thought that they can intimately be involved with angels. So I strongly believe that they took up the form of men. And you can see that in many, in many verses in the scripture, even where Abraham, a men came. And they were actually, the Bible confirms they were angels, but they came in form of men, dressed like men, looking like men. They even sat and ate and even washed their feet. So they took up the the angels can take up form and shape of even human beings and come to earth so they took up the shape of men and that's how they took these daughters as wives and married them but you know the results they went the up siring giants look at numbers 13 33 and i will read and there and, and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which came of the giants and we were in in our own sight as grasshopper and so we were in their sight yeah so that is how giants came to play when these angels came down because by the end of the day 
whether you hide your shape whether you hide your form whether you hide your true identity your true nature you walk this other as a human being yet you're not a human being you are a fallen angel so whatever nature you take up no matter how much you try to deceive the world that you look like human beings yet your dna you're not a human being for lack of a better word your true nature what sometimes we will say your DNA, your true nature is not man. So whatever you sire, even if you take up human beings to marry them, to sire children, those children will not be children. They will not be the God's nature. They will not be the God's seed. They will not be human beings as God created. That is a corrupted seed already. So by the end of the day, that will not be hid because these children will reveal the true nature of the seed that has that the, the seed that has given birth to that was given birth to so no matter how much you hide the seed will prove your true nature and that is why giants came to play and we all know the havoc they caused and because these are the fallen ones these ha are rebelled have rebelled against the will purpose and mission of god so they will take up a rebellious nature they will take up a nature that is not of the kingdom of god they will not take up a nature of goodness and that is why most of the giants caused havoc they ate they killed they were actually a disaster in the making they, they actually almost if it was not god taking up action to end them to 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 put an end to them they would have actually destroyed mankind and humanity human species could have been completely wiped out the seed of god the true original plan of god for mankind and being here on earth would have been eradicated completely because of these fallen angels so that's how giants came to play and we all know we have read through the histories and there's much of discovery so we cannot lie that giants did not exist and we believe because they are also in the bible despite discoveries that have been made giants are there and we cannot also lie or we cannot also sit back and assume that they are completely gone because the bible also confirms that in the last days the evil will be so much like during the the, the noah's time and you know during the noah's time evil was so much because also giants were too many and there was so much you can read even there's also the book of enoch that has clearly um given in details the story of that those days and what the giants did and what they came and taught even the forbidden the the, the, the for the for the forbidden wisdom and the forbidden knowledge and what and what the repercussions were and so uh, we are told in the Bible, the end times, it will be as those days. So we cannot rule out that giants, there are no more giants on earth. Because we are also told even after the flood, it's not like they were all eradicated. And we have also for those who like uh, discoveries and finding out and learning and studying more, we know that they are giants even currently. So whatever the Bible has stated, we always live to see it because remember the word of god is truth and whatever the bible says you will live to see it so when we are told as it was in the days of noah so it will be in the end times we will live to see those things coming back coming alive again but now that is not where we were headed we were headed um we remember the title is the two types of seed and we are talking about the seed of the devil or the seed that is not of god the seed of the fallen yeah so that is what we are talking about and we also needed to confirm that they are here on earth this this seed is walking on the earth this seed was there this seed has been proven even in the scriptures which is the truth the truth that should guide us along that it has been there so I will also take you a bit in the book of Ezekiel 32, 27. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war. And they have laid their swords under their heads, for their iniquities shall be upon their bones, though they were the terror of the mighty, in the land of the living so this is also confirming what i just said what what how much they i mean the giants brought terror 
these children of the fallen the fallen just because the fallen angels defied the laws of god and came down and took up women they brought terror in the earth because remember anything contrary to the will purpose and mission of god it is antichrist and antichrist is everything opposite of the goodness and the plans and the mandate of god so it cannot be good. Anything about contrary to the will, purpose, and mission of God will be evil, will be devastating. It will bring a lot of robbery, a lot of killings, a lot of destruction. Because we are told also the opposite is the same. And we are also told, we, sh we are told actually the mandate of the devil. Remember also the devil is a fallen angel. Remember the devil as well defied the will, purpose and mission of God. You see? And because he defied it, he brought the complete opposite of the plan of God. He has to work against and that is why he is anti-Christ. Anti-Christ. He cannot work for the good and the plan and the mandate and the purpose of God. So everything about anything fallen, anything against the will, purpose and mission of God has to work against the will, purpose and mission of God in our lives and for us. And it cannot be good. I will take you to Matthew 7, 16, 20. And before I get to Matthew 7, on how to know them because sometimes people will tend to ask um, it is difficult to identify if these people they can take up the shape of a human being how are we going to know and for me I do not even know I do not even know when God speaks I do not know the voice of God I do not know how God speaks but in many occurrences in this in this platform I have tried to say God is always speaking but it is us who do not listen the creator has a way of speaking to each and every one of us and it doesn't matter you are level it doesn't matter whether you are a babe or a young man or a father god is always speaking and i will tell you few of the many ways god speaks god will speak to you through dreams everybody dreams there is nothing that can take shape physically good or bad before god shows you in the dream and it is that, that and that is why it is very important for us to dream anyone who doesn't dream that is very dangerous you need to get on your knees and pray because there is an evil that is barring your dreams so that you may not know particular things. So it is very important to dream. And actually, I'm happy because one pastor said that you should never say you are dreaming. You say, I have seen. Because that is an eye to the spiritual realm. Dreams is reality. You are awakened. When you go to sleep, you are awakened in the spiritual realm. Because remember when this physical body is asleep, that doesn't mean that your spirit, your spirit is asleep. Spirit doesn't, doesn't sleep. Your spirit man doesn't sleep. So when your, eye, your spiritual eye opens when your body is asleep, that is what we call dreams. So you see. So when God shows you an evil thing that is about to happen or a person who is doing evil to you, when you wake up in the morning, I'm happy that pastor said that. You'll say, I have seen you. I have seen what you are planning for me, you evil people, you evil enemy, you evil devil, you evil demons. Now I know because that is how you see. And when you learn to to nullify what God shows you because I normally say when you, God shows you in a dream a bad thing immediately when you wake up you cancel it you pray and end it and when God shows you a good thing you wake up and receive it and accept it because it has already been created in the realm of the spirit so it is physical ready to manifest in the physical realm that is one way of how God speaks to you some people see visions, even on a broad daylight you might see it and all of a sudden you're not asleep, you're not awake and you're just taken in a trance and you see something. And sooner or later, if you did not know, you will see it come to manifest. Then, oh yeah, I saw it. So God is always talking. We do not listen. And there are those who are young men, who are mature young men, even fathers, who actually now have conversations with God.
That if I want to know something, you ask God and God will answer you. That you need to know something, you ask and God will show you. You, you Even sometimes you're seated and you're like, God, I need you to speak to me. And you'll open up your Bible and whatever that will open when you read you'll clearly see this is the answer of what i was asking for so god speaks god is always speaking remember even in the bible he said if you don't praise me even the rocks i can raise the rocks the the stones and the stones will sing for me god can use anything to speak to you you might even be seated and even wondering god i need to hear you i need you to give me direction and you switch on a television and you see somebody speaking to you like i'm speaking to you today and whatever i will speak is exactly what god wanted you to know as an answer to the question you have been beating yourself about so god is always speaking and he has various many ways to speak to an individual so let us learn to ask because you cannot get anything from our kingdom, the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ without asking because remember our kingdom doesn't force. So it is prudent to ask. It is important to ask. Learn to ask God and God will always be answering. And remember there are many scriptures he normally says, even now, whatever you ask God, he will give it to you. Whatever you ask the Father, in my name it shall be given you. All these are scriptures. All these are facts. This is the truth. God is not a man that he should like. So everything he says, he is going to do it. So God is always speaking. So now I will take you to Matthew 7, 16, 20. And I'm reading from the King James Version. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruits, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruits. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruits. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, it is hewn down and cast into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. You see? By their fruits, we shall know them. You shall know them by their fruits. So there is no way you can say it is challenging to know the seed of God and the seed of the devil. What is this seed bringing as an offspring? What is this seed? Because you're saying you shall know them by their fruit. I'm not saying that you wait like the Nephilim, the, the fallen angels, they sired and got judged. That's how you get to know this is a fallen angel. No. You shall know them by their fruit. What was God trying to tell us? We shall know them by their fruit. We shall know them by, by what they bring forth, what they manifest. What, is, what do they manifest? What is their character? What is the manifestation of their character? What is the manifestation of their nature? What is the manifestation of their thinking? What is the manifestation of their talking? When you sit around this person, what do they bring forth? Don't you know there are people you can sit around and the only thing they do is curse. This is the only thing they know how to do and how to do. And every given moment, they cherish on curses. They cherish on bringing people down. They cherish on robbery. They cherish on, de on death. They thrive on destruction. And remember, this is the nature of the devil. And remember, they thrive on lying. They are perfect liars. Every single second, everything they utter is a lie. They thrive in lies. And when you go back to this, the scripture, how do you define the devil? What is the character of the devil? What is the character of this seed of the devil? This seed of the serpent? They are robbers. They are killers. They are destroyers. They are liars. And now Matthew 7, 7 16 is telling you what? Ye shall know them by their fruits. So what is so difficult in identifying the seed of the devil? And remember how we started. We said this seed cannot be saved. This seed cannot be delivered. We need to walk in wisdom, in knowledge, in understanding, and 
in revelation and in the spirit of God to be able to identify this seed because most of us and that's why I'm saying every topic I bring in this in this in this in this in this platform it is in line with marriages you will see that you will spend decades of years praying praying fasting interceding seeking divine help from heaven to help change somebody as we were saying from the onset the way like women were very good in praying for husbands to change and nothing is happening and you hear i've gotten those emails of women who have prayed for 10 years 20 30 40 i have gotten an email from a lady who is still praying in the union of marriage she is on her 40th year and the husband has never changed actually he has become worse and you seem to wonder the scripture just told us whatever we ask god even now whatever we ask god he does it is god a liar no then there is a problem Remember, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So I need to come back and call myself for a meeting. What is actually happening? What did I get married to? And already I know as a statement of fact, when I was getting married, I never consulted God. And remember, especially the people I'm addressing today are people with great destinies. Remember the devil knows your destiny. He knows your star. He knows your mandate. He knows that you're a weapon of mass destruction in his kingdom. So he knew. So who did he bring in your life as a spouse or a life partner? Both sides, husbands or a wife. How do you know that this is the seed of God? How do you know that this is the seed of destruction? This is the seed of the devil that came to stop you from your tracks. Came to stop you from realizing your destiny. How do you know? And that is why I felt it was very important to have this topic today. Because most of us have been praying. Not knowing that there are seeds that cannot be delivered. And because they are here with a mandate, with a purpose the end it is you going to the grave because they will not go to the grave because if you do not rise up in wisdom and now deal with this matter as it's supposed to be dealt with you still believe there is salvation to the seed of the devil the mandate of the devil will never change the mandate of the devil is clear and black and white in the scriptures he came to rob he came to kill he came to destroy so when is this going to change? Is it going to be changed by your prayers? Is it going to be changed by your fasting? No, it will not. It will not. It will end with your death. If you do not walk in wisdom, if you do not walk in understanding, if you do not walk in the knowledge and revelation of the spirit of God himself, you will be destroyed. So we have been told, it is very simple. You shall know them by their fruits. What fruits has this wife been exhibiting? What fruit is this husband exhibiting? You have tried because we are not saying don't try. The minute you see somebody error is the seed of the devil. No. But you will know the seed of the devil. Because the seed of the devil cannot change. The seed of the devil has come with a mandate. And it is so clear. Let me tell you the red flags are always very clear. Especially in the union of marriage. A husband who comes with a mandate to kill. He starts from day one. I have mentioned here before, even when it comes to physical beating, he will target your head. He will target where he can hit knowing very well you will not wake up. Look at it even on the other side for those who have told me even the, the abusive wives. Look the target. They will come with a knife to cut where? Your neck, knowing very well maybe you will not even survive the trip to the hospital. So we need to be very careful. We need to walk in divine revelation. We cannot afford to continue perishing for lack of knowledge. And now you can clearly understand the true definition of what God was trying to tell us that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge.